And welcome to another video. We're going to be doing something a little bit different today. Today I'm bringing on a guest and we are going to be discussing a special event that is currently taking place on Twitter. So without waiting any longer, I'm going to bring my guest Kyle in. Kyle, welcome and thank you so much for doing this today. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes just to introduce yourself to everyone who's watching. All right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here and talk about this bracket. So my name is Kyle Nemus. I am a science teacher, tech coach kind of person. I'm a founder of Classroom Q and my ed tech bundle and just, I don't know, an educator who is very much into ed tech and um, excited to talk about the bracket um, and, and tell you all about it. Yeah, and that's the main reason I really wanted to have you on today is because I've been following you on Twitter for a while now and it all started with my EdTech bundle, I think. That was the first thing that sort of jumped out, everything you did there and all the work you've put in. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about my EdTech bundle for those that are watching and haven't heard about my EdTech bundle? Yeah, of course. So um, we're very new, as a, a few months old, but basically what we did is our mission was to try to be one place where as a teacher you can go to to really get kind of, we're calling them mini subscriptions to a lot of your favorite tools for absolutely free. Um, and the way we did that is we just reached out to all these really great tools like Nearpod and Pear Deck and Cami and Moat and all these people. And we just said, listen, like we'd love to tell the teachers about your tool, but the only way you can get on our website is if you offer the teachers a little bit more than they can normally get. So they only get a month normally as a trial, we gotta make it two months or three months. And a lot of the tools said, sure, why not? So our, our site is basically full of all these um, extended time with a tool that you wouldn't normally get for free. So it's, the, it's just hopefully, a one-stop place where you can all just try out tools for longer than you normally could for free. Brilliant. I, I love that. By the way, for everyone watching, there will be a link in the description below to this website. I would say go and check it out. It's brilliant. If you want to have, you know, an extended trial or more access, it's the place to go. Go and have a look. It's just the perfect place for teachers. But that's not why we're meeting today. We're talking about the EdTech madness, aren't we? Because that's the thing that you're running at the moment on Twitter. How long has that been going on? Uh, this is the fourth year so far. Okay. And can you tell a little bit more to our audience about what the EdTech madness is all about? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's me just being kind of crazy and just really... Um, making a bracket of all my favorite tools. So four years ago, I just picked what I thought were the top 16 tools and threw it out there on Twitter and just said like, what do you think? Um, mostly because I thought it'd be fun, but mostly also because I feel like as an educator or a tech coach, like everything you read about like top five tools here and top 10 tools here, like I, honestly, you never know. Everything seems like it could be biased or like what the source is or I don't know. So like, I thought it'd be really cool just to throw it out there and let the people who are using these tools vote and decide um so yeah and it's kind of been getting bigger and bigger every year and this year it's like i can't stop following it just because it's just been so intense and, and really exciting i must be honest I've, I've been guilty of that as well i've written blog posts with my top five and i've made videos with my top 10 and i must say it's my top 10 it's <laughs> really so that that's what i love about this it's on twitter really and you're using the poll functionality so you've got is it like thousands of votes coming in or we just finished round one and round one, every round lasts two days. So round one, I tallied them up. We had a little over 10,000 votes for round one. And um, I don't know where we're at right now, but I guess we'll see. Right. Sh shall I pull it up? Let's have a look at where we're at now. So this is what it looks like. So in round one, we had all these different applications and, and services all up against each other. And that round is now completed. And we're now in round two. And so what I wanted to do is have a quick chat about round two. If you're ready for that, maybe we can go through the tools that have survived round one and then <laughs> just maybe highlight one of our favorite features of each of these. Are you ready for that? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, brilliant. Well, let's have a look at the first one, Canva. Now, I'm sure that many viewers here know about and use Canva, but what would be your number one feature that you love within Canva? Oh, man. I mean, just the fact that I'm not an artistic person at all. And I feel like Canva is the best tool that I've ever used that makes me feel like I can make anything at all. I know for me, I use them a lot just for YouTube thumbnails or just quick little posters and stuff like that. But to me, the, the pre-made templates that they have in there that let you make things that look like you're professional without you having to be professional is just my favorite. 
Yeah, definitely. I, I agree. I agree. It's such an easy tool to use. It's just it's brilliant. It? And they've got so many templates available, just huge time saver. I, I would say my number one feature that I think is sort of often overlooked is the presentations. The Canva presentation tool is just absolutely mind-blowingly easy to set up, beautiful to look at. Um, we used it for a parent workshop recently. And the main reason I went with Canva presentations over other ones was that that Q&A. The Q&A is just minimalistic design and it was just so so beautiful um i'm not sure have you used the canva presentations before or no i haven't oh you should definitely have a look at it it is just <laughs> it's beautiful they've got the same beautiful designs that you have with other things that they provide for your presentations so it's just another tool that you can use to really mix things up in the classroom or with parents um, cool. which brings us to the next one flipgrid big favorite anything that you would like to share about flipgrid what is your if you had if you had one feature or one thing to highlight about flipgrid what would it be yeah so i mean flipgrid i feel like at all tools right in the last handful of years has really taken education by storm i feel like when they first came out it went from like no one knew about flipgrid to you every single person used flipgrid for everything they could use it for um so obviously i think my favorite thing about it I'm gonna give you two. I know you said one. It's just the versatility of it in the sense of like, it's not, it's, it just does a simple thing really well in the sense of like, you can collect videos, you can use it for book talks or you can use it for presentations or whatever it is. Um, but it, me personally, I'm a science teacher, like I said. And so I like it for just the really quick option. That's what I use it for this week was for kids who were scared to present um, their presentations for either me or for their class, depending on what they were comfortable with. So um, I just love how simple it is for kids to use and the screen share option. So I don't know it just it helps relieve a lot of anxiety of a lot of kids, which I love. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, that's the main thing for me is the student agency is just the fact that you're giving them this tool that is for them easy to use and it gives them this opportunity to to create things and it, and it's putting that emphasis on creation over consumption, really, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, Flipgrid, another favorite. So we've got Canva and Flipgrid up against each other. So for all of those watching, how can they get involved? How can they start voting now? Good question. So it's all on Twitter. So I'm at Kyle Nemeth, K-Y-L-E-N-I-E-M-I-S. So I'm just tweeting every couple of days and then right in the comments is just the poll. So you just click, click, click. Anyone you think is the top tool for you is, is just click the button. And then we'll okay, so that link will be down in the description, but we're not done yet. So don't go there yet. <laughs> um, and if you do open it in a second tab so you can vote as we're going through these tools. But that brings us to the next two. We've got Look It and Quizzes, two really, really fun tools to use in the classroom. So let's start with Look It. Now, if you don't mind, I'll go first with that one because what okay. I absolutely love about look at is that it does things in a different way um i almost i want to say it's sort of kahoot meets a tower defense game and it's like it's just it, it mixes things up it allows you to bring those you know quick little assessments into the classroom but it's not in the same way that they have always been doing it it's just completely different and it really feels like game-based education it feels like you're playing a game um yeah it, it does and you and i both add to that yeah i mean you and i teach both of the kind of same level of kids kind of you know 12 13 year old kids to me this is like the wheelhouse of that age because i don't know if you've ever played the, the crypto hack mode but like it, you know it's such a fun like they have so many fun modes that are so relevant to the kids and like you said I think what I love about it is the variety. It's just you forget that you're learning because it's honestly probably the most fun review game I've ever played. Um, but they also have different modes for different times. So there's a mode that you can do if you only have three minutes left of class, or there's a mode you can do if you have 15 minutes if you want to do a review game. So I think that's what I like about it too, is that you can take whatever content you want and squeeze it into whatever time period you want and um, whatever kind of is, is age appropriate. But it's just it's just a lot of fun. I feel like the, <laughs> like the number one thing is it's just extremely fun for kids. Absolutely. And that, that brings us to quizzes, another one of those, you know, quick little assessment tools that you can use in the classroom. Um, I would say it's very different, though, from Look It. Uh, quizzes really, you know, you've got to pick and choose the ones you want to use in your class and for your lesson. And for the, it's, it's just the right tool for the right time, isn't it? And I feel like quizzes has really helped me at times to, 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 to use a tool that is fun enough to get everyone engaged, yet not too, how do you put it? busy, noisy, distracting. It's sort of, it's, it's a 
very clean interface and it just it makes sense at certain times during your lesson when everyone is really focused to to sort of make that transition into quizzes rather than something a bit more upbeat you know hyperactive or you know full of energy w would you agree with that or would you like is there anything you'd add to that so i mean that is to me my number one favorite thing about quizzes whenever i tell teachers about quizzes i would say it's almost like there's like a fun dial on it right where you can totally tone it down and have it be very serious and get lots of really good data about the kids and then you can turn on this and turn on power-ups and turn on this and turn it into very game mode so you, it has that dial that you can really make it as fun or as kind of like business-like as, as you need for that time okay brilliant um over to the other side now i see we've got four really big names there we've got screencastify edpuzzle nearpod pear deck I mean, I'm sure that these are not strangers to all the teachers watching. Um, so let's start with the first one, Screencastify. Now, I think from anyone watching my channel, they'll know I am a fan of screencasts. <laughs> I do quite a few. Um, personally, I don't use Screencastify as much as I used to because on a Windows device, I've got a whole bunch of other tools and I do a lot of editing. But what I like about Screencastify is just how easy it is to use for teachers how easy it is to get started because there's a lot that co comes to screencasting and recording videos and you know there's a lot to learn but screencastify makes it easy to just record record something do your minor edits and get it out to the students um, so that would be my number one feature that i like about screencastify is the fact that it it, it really makes the the entire process of creating videos streamlined and fast um so that would be why you definitely want to have a look at screencastify anything that you would add to that yeah so i i agree i feel like it has the i call it like the that that's it feature so like anytime i ever did a screencasting presentation or a pd and i would teach people screencastify so many teachers came in like i don't know i don't know how to screencast i'm scared and then all of a sudden they use screencastify and there's like wait well, that's it like it's literally that easy to screencast and share it with people so like to me, it has that factor of it takes something that seems overwhelming potentially, um, and it just makes it so easy. Absolutely. And actually, one more thing to add to that that I forgot about is that integration with Google Drive. I mean, if you're a Google Workspace school, it's a no-brainer. It's an absolute no-brainer. If you're on Chromebooks, if you're using Google Workspace, the integration with Google Drive really drives it home for me when it comes to using Screencastify for those screencasting needs. Um, Edpuzzle, would you like to take the first highlighted feature for Edpuzzle. Yeah, so Edpuzzle, I feel like it's one of those tools that like you love, but it's like, it's one of those tools, but also could, it feels like you're almost like checking up on kids, right? Like it's really good, but you're like, I gotta make sure you're watching my video. So like, I don't know, it doesn't have the, it does its job really well and it definitely serves its purpose. Um, but I, I think my favorite thing about Edpuzzle is the fact that it's out of most of these tools, it's free features are the same like there are no paid premium model it's just their free model is just you get 20 videos and then if you pay more you get more than 20 videos but there's no extras and it's funny i was actually talking to one of their people recently about getting them on myatechbundle.com and having them join us and he's saying like yeah we'd love to join you but we're we're pretty free already you know what i mean so we're, we're trying to figure that out so to me i i think that's just a from a price point of view i love that they're basically free except for you know just getting more videos yeah, and, and one thing I would add to Edpuzzle that I've really been enjoying is their Chrome extension. I'm not sure if you've used their Chrome extension, um, which basically it, it sort of it upgrades your experience. So let's say you're on YouTube and you, you see a video that you want to use. There's now a single button. You click on it, use an Edpuzzle. And it just, again, it's all about saving time. You know, if I can shave off a couple of minutes of planning work or prep work or hey, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for it. And I think Edpuzzle does that really well. They really manage to sort of, you know, speed up how long it takes for you to prep a video lesson where you are adding interactive content to that video. Um, before that, I've played around with a bit of, you know, HTML5 and Edpuzzle makes it easy. You know, you want to add some questions to your video, there you go, five minutes, you've done it. Um, I've actually got a couple of videos about Edpuzzle on the channel and um, yeah, I agree with you. That price point for teachers is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, which brings us to the next two, Pear Deck and Nearpod. Would you like to go first? Uh, sure. Yeah. So, I mean, they're so similar, right? So we'll just, uh, 
and I, I know we're not supposed to, we said, we said when we were off uh, camera here, we're not going to pick any kind of winners here. So I'm, I'm not going to say which one I think is better because they are so similar, but I'm sure if you love one, you'll, you'll I mean, they're not so similar and they're you know, totally different tools. But from my point of view, I, I love that Nearpod is just has so many different types of interactive questions, I think uh, is my favorite part about it is just that if you're giving a lesson, like in, you want to do anything you'd want to normally do in a lesson, poll kids, break kids, get them do any kind of feedback. To me, they just have a whole lot of really, really good options. So that's probably my favorite thing about Nearpod. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, the, 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 the level of choice is just, it's amazing. And they're constantly adding things to it as well. I mean, it really feels like Nearpod, every time I check in or log into Nearpod, there, there's something new. It's, it's really like it's actively being developed. Um, I think the flip side to that is that, yes, they do have a premium model, definitely. Um, but that's what also allows them to do all those, you know, premium features and all those constant updates. So I think, you know, as you mentioned, they're, they're similar tools in a way. However, I do feel that many teachers will have a preference over one or mm -hmm. the other. Um, and that's fine. You know, use the tool you're comfortable with. Um, if you're more comfortable with Nearpod, hey, go to Twitter right now, vote for Nearpod. If you <laughs> prefer Pear, Pear Deck and you're using that on a daily basis, go to Twitter right now and vote for Pear Deck. So, you know, I would say just get involved, um, which actually brings me to Pear Deck. And what I want to highlight there is sort of that integration with Google Slides. Mm -hmm. When you have that side menu, it just, again, it speeds things up, doesn't it? I'm not sure if you've used the side menu at all, or if you use that integration that is there with Pear Deck in, in your classes. But I mean, both these tools during, especially during online learning have just been absolute lifesavers, haven't they? Um, I've had many teachers ask, oh, how do I do this? And how can I do this during an, an, an online lesson? And, you know, I'm not there and I want them to, to sketch this out and I want them to, hey, there's, there's a tool for that. <laughs> you, know, you, can, you can have them, they, they're on touch enabled devices. Have you, have you tried out using one of these special activities that are built into this? And then, yeah, teachers just fell in love with it. So what would be a feature that you like about Pear Deck? I was gonna say, I feel like the fact that it integrates so well with Google Slides, and I know Nearpod has the same add-on too, but I feel like to me, when I think of Pear Deck, I just think of how easy it integrates with Google Slides, like you said, um, and all those little templates that they have, right? That are on there on the side, like all those social emotional check-ins that are so easy to slot into any lesson, which I think is really cool. They have a lot of just like thumbs up, thumbs down, like any grade anyone can use for really quick check-ins. It's just, right, so easy for anyone to use. Perfect, so that's eight different options here that our viewers can choose between. So we've got Canva and Flipgrid, Look It and Quizzes, Screencastify, Edpuzzle, Nearpod and Pear Deck. And I can't wait to find out which of these is going to win. Um, how much time do people have? When when does this round end? So this round will end, well, for me in uh, America, it will end uh, Sunday at three o'clock okay. uh, Eastern time, Standard Time. And then the next round is again two days, correct? Yep. So I'll, I'll we'll give people a little bit of a breather, then I'll launch the next one on Monday. I usually have a little bit of a breather, and then it'll be two round, two days once again. Um, okay. But like I said, if, it, it is just if you even if you go to vote, like just check out the comments and check out like it has been so fun and exciting to watch. Like people are just so very much into this, and companies are into it, and like the the. the the healthy trash talk that's happening and it's just like i don't know it's just really really cool to see the passion that people feel for these these tools yeah and, it, and it's definitely a positive event I, that, that's that is something i do want to highlight is that you know we wouldn't be having this con conversation if it was about you know my tool is better than yours and i want nothing to do with you i mean to give you an example <laughs> that first round we had um book creator and canva and they were having a frank discussion like hold on a minute we're working together now you know we integrate <laughs> Um, and I remember reading that on Twitter and I just, I love that. I love seeing those companies having those chats and, and maybe, maybe some new connections will be made through this. Who knows? Um, maybe a tool is not yet integrating with another and they see that they're up against each other. And maybe this sparks a conversation that could then lead to better tools for our teachers watching. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for having this quick conversation. I know it's a very different video from the videos we usually post on the channel, but thank you so much for taking the time 
and having a chat with me about the EdTech Madness. And also thank you for mentioning EdTech Bundle and everything you do there and just providing teachers with those longer trials and additional features. So thank you so much for everything you do. Yeah, thank you for having me.